on this week's UBC From Here, helping developers make a different kind of community. The New Monaco Neighborhood Project here is essentially to create what we believe the Okanagan can be as a place to live. We've given ourselves the mission to be the healthiest neighborhood in Canada. And like all great missions, we weren't exactly sure what that means. And so we've now started working with UBC to figure out what that means. Promoting Okanagan artists. We thought of a series of community-based art projects going up and down the valley to talk to people about what they felt was attractive about their places and what they would be afraid of losing and what they would like to preserve, what they'd like to communicate about their place and how they would like to grow. And finding synergies with European partners. We're a large way apart, Canada and UK, but actually there's similarities between our academic groups. We bring interesting flavors between the groups. Welcome to this week's UBC From Here, I'm Rosemary Jean Thompson. In a collaborative initiative led by the Okanagan Sustainability Institute, UBC researchers from a variety of faculties are providing their expertise in building a community of the future in Peachland. The New Monaco project is very unique in the sense that we're creating something from the very beginning. The New Monaco neighborhood project here is essentially to create what we believe the Okanagan can be as a place to live. We've given ourselves the mission to be the healthiest neighborhood in Canada. And like all great missions, we weren't exactly sure what that means. And so we've now started working with UBC to figure out what that means. When we think of uh, New Monaco as part of the Okanagan as a living lab, our campus is also part of that living lab. So this all started very organically from the new kinds of collaborations that you can have with a, a new campus of a global university. We have done numerous projects with UBC with different professors, different faculties, many students, and working with students even after they've graduated, still working with us to, out of interest to figure out exactly how we can design sidewalks, streets, parks, homes differently so that simply by living here, you would be healthier. We feel very fortunate in Peachland that New Monaco has chosen Peachland to build their new development. When we partner and work with the university, what we're also seeing then, of course, is the opportunity to do things right the first time. Look for ways that not only we can learn and our own developers can learn, but also other developers in the future. Part of what's really special about this project is certainly the people in Peachland who are so engaged in how their community is going to grow. And then the diversity of people and interest in Peachland and the way that interacts with the university and our diverse people is the next dimension that makes this really special. It's really important to Peachland's future economy because as a community we have to grow. And one of the things that makes this different from most other developments is the collaborative basis on which the project is proceeding. Personally, as an engineer who worked in the industry and moved back to academia, I want all my students to have industrial experience. So this is an excellent opportunity for us to have such a demonstration and such a project. Just very grateful that UBC is partnering with New Monaco and Peachland and a number of other partners on this. I think it's a very exciting project and we look forward to the results. I think the role of UBC in the Valley, it is enormous. It is profound, the importance of UBC in the Valley. And we're only just beginning to see that. One of the privileges we have had because the project is so diverse is to be able to offer many ways for UBC to get off the campus. I think the, the institute structure, the, the Okanagan Sustainability Institute, is a fantastic bridge between what is a, a core academic institution and 
those of us who are in industry, because its job is to bridge that. And without that, it can be a lot harder to make the connections. And so a lot of praise goes to UBC for having set up its institutes and the leadership they've shown in reaching out. Now, when UBC talks about the valley, there are real projects all up and down the valley that people engage, people in first name basis, pieces of land, real projects that are drawing students and professors and research money into the valley. And that begins to tie the whole valley together to UBC as a campus and everybody's life is that much richer. It's a lot better for the economy and it's a lot better for the overall culture of the valley. You can think about this as a beacon project or a lighthouse project. And if you think about the Okanagan as a beautiful network of towns and cities of various sizes separated by the length of the lake, you've got a network of opportunities, a network of places which can be learning lessons from Peachland. And of course, we'd love to transfer these lessons as a global university to cities around the world, in Canada and certainly far beyond. Walk and Talk is all about keeping yourself fit and communicating with people. So many people need this in their lives. I have friends that are in their late 80s and I want to make it to their age and be as healthy as they are. The kind of people who should participate in this program are seniors who are interested in learning more about health and healthy lifestyles, who are interested in meeting new friends and becoming more physically active. UBC researchers and artists recently held a month-long interactive space at the Yellow Schoolhouse in Peachland, where work from local artists was featured along with various activities intended to bolster the community's sense of place. I think one of the most fun things in Peachland is to walk along the water. The sounds are just gorgeous. You hear kids laughing and people chatting and, and everybody's got their chairs out and their floaties out and they're swimming and it's just a wonderful scene. We thought of a series of community-based art projects going up and down the valley to talk to people about what they felt was attractive about their places and what they would be afraid of losing and what they would like to preserve what they'd like to communicate about their place and how they would like to grow. We tend to stay in our own little areas of comfort and this was a great way of getting out of that zone and contributing to this Peachland community and involving the community in seeing what can be done between UBC and a small art group in a small community. The Yellow Schoolhouse project began probably about a year and a half ago and community engagement seems to be a natural method by which we can do our research by going into the community. I think it's a chance for there to be an exchange of community knowledge that flows into the university and also the incredible resources of the university flowing into the communities. When UBC Okanagan began to get involved with this community, it brought new ideas. It created an impetus that has just continued along. It's brought creativity, the permission to think, what else can we be doing? When we were first approached as an arts community, about a year and a half ago, it was called eco-art. And I had to check in the dictionaries and Google it and I found that there was a connection between the ecology of an area and the art forms that are produced within the area. And I said, what an excellent match. That gave us in the Arts Council a motivation to match up with UBC Okanagan. Through this project, I think we've made a wonderful connection and I think we're gonna continue maybe to do other projects. Maybe a lot of people maybe you are not so aware of how UBC always involved in our communities and I think this is a wonderful introduction. With the Dig Your Neighborhood projects we're engaging with emerging artists who are students and it's a very community consultative process but it's not art that's created by the community. Here it is very much art created by the community. It's kind of a two-pronged approach. I don't think one is necessarily better than the other or it's just trying out different ways of creating dialogue through artistic practices.
This past fall, UBC Okanagan formally announced a partnership with Imperial College in the United Kingdom. We're a large way apart. Canada and UK, but actually there's similarities between our academic groups. We bring interesting flavours between the groups. We were introduced to Imperial College through Helios, a local company, so that led us to go and see what kinds of things were going on at Imperial, and then following on from that we realised that we actually have very complementary areas of interest and expertise, and so we, over the past year, have worked towards an accord which allows us to go forward with developing both collaborative research programmes as well as looking at development of partnering academic programmes. We are exploring as diverse projects as getting our students at master's level to team up on a module or a course and work intensively on some task for several weeks. We're exploring whether it might be possible for us to have some form of collaborative master's programme using some of the best examples of courses and modules and learning from London and some of the best examples here in Canada at UBC. Falling into a partnership with an institution such as Imperial really gives us an opportunity to play with the best in the world as we think about what we're going to become. And they're very excited to be part of a conversation with a young university such as ours, a university campus like the Okanagan campus of UBC, and to have the possibility of playing with UBC, a world-class university in North America in what we think of as a sandbox for new models of what universities can achieve. We, on the other hand, gain from being a partner with one of the world's top 10 universities, which is globally renowned for its work in many areas of science and engineering. The work that's going on here on an academic level is, is world leading. I've been able to meet some of your staff here, and the exciting thing is we're all, we're all uh, playing off each other already. So being a part of a bigger interdisciplinary team allows us to actually further our research and generate and try new things that we otherwise couldn't do. We can't imagine where we'll end up, but it's a very exciting beginning to have a very active partnership like this. Walk and Talk is all about keeping yourself fit and communicating with people. So many people need this in their lives. I have friends that are in their late 80s and I want to make it to their age and be as healthy as they are. The kind of people who should participate in this program are seniors who are interested in learning more about health and healthy lifestyles, who are interested in meeting new friends and becoming more physically active. That wraps it up for this week's show. For more stories from the Okanagan campus of UBC, visit ubco.tv. If you have any feedback about the show, we'd love to hear from you. Our email address is info at ubco.tv. I'm Rosemary Jean Thompson. Make it a great week.